I automatically love you if you host two podcasts, one about running and then the other about parenting, because I, I think you see me. <laughs> I'm so excited to have Lindsay Hine on the Active Mom Postpartum Podcast today. She was a audience recommendation. So if you have people that you want to see on the show, hop in my DMs, let me know. With Lindsay, she's the uh, host of I'll Have Another and Why Is Everyone Yelling? We talk about all things running, how you get back to running and not lose your mind with four kids, all of hers being boys, and just how different it is, you know, finding yourself as a runner uh, before you have kids and then after. So if you have kids, you're going to love this one because you, you, you'll you you'll see yourself, you'll, you'll connect with us. And if you are a coach or a trainer and you're interested in working with runners if you're a physical therapist and maybe you know you're not quite sure what it's like or what you know that patient of yours what their life is like with a couple of kids and you want to relate a little bit more you definitely want to take a listen let's start the show all right i have a confession to make is i'm actually on twitter um i'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I was telling Lindsay, um, Lindsay is one of the few people that, you know, I had a, I had a viewer be like, hey, you got to get Lindsay on. And I'm like, why do I know that name? And it's because I followed her on Twitter. Be and, and there's very few people that I know like that. So it's come full circle. So Lindsay Hine, runner, mom to four boys podcast uh, for runners and parents. Welcome to the Active Mom Postpartum. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I love that you know me on Twitter. Sometimes it's scary because I'm like, oh no, what did you see? <laughs> I don't talk on there. I'm just a closet person. I just, uh -huh. I just, I just watch. There's not many memes anymore. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So mom of four boys, first of all, mm -hmm. are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> What's the age range? Um, so our boys are four, six, eight, and 10. So, oh my Lord. Oh yeah. my gosh. Okay. We're preschool my to fourth grade. Okay. <laughs> Mine, I have a boy who is 12 and a daughter who is nine going on 16. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Can't imagine. It, you know, it, it, you know how it is. You get there. You get there. So um, you were always a runner or is this something that's kind of, you know, evolved over time? So I've been running since I was like 15. Awesome. When I joined the cross country team, I didn't really want to, but my best friend was on the team. And so she twisted my arm. And then the cross country coach was obviously the distance coach for the track team. And she was like, sorry, yes. you have to run track. And um, I kind of fell in love with the team culture that we had in high school. It was a really special thing. I think that there's something really special about cross country teams. Yes. Although I just, have you read the book, The Boys in the Boat? No, I, I've seen it's on my list to read. I had a friend just read it. It was on my list for years and I okay. finally dove in and it's really, really good. And it has me like longing for that like team. team? Yeah, because yeah. there's just something really special about it. And I was thinking, you know, you do see like adult running teams out there and like tennis teams. And that's like, man, we all need to be part of a team. There's something really special about that. Well, and I think to some degree, there's a hair carryover to finding like those moms, mm -hmm. groups of moms who run too. I mean, yeah. we, we, we were very similar background, except for I started a little bit earlier, but it was your same coach for cross country mm -hmm. was usually the guy's track coach. We would always get the football coach, which I think is incredibly stupid to give a bunch <laughs> of pubescent teenage <laughs> girls the football coach. Um, but I also Nordic skied in high school. And so we had the same coach and the same team all the way through. So you're with the same girls, same everything. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree with you that that was so much fun then. Um, so you, you ran through that. Did you run in college at all or before you mm -hmm. had kids? Yeah, no, I didn't run like for my school. I did yeah. always run. Like I always stayed in shape and like ran through college just because I was, have always been a person that exercised and moved my body. And, um, then my husband and I ran our first marathon in 2008, ah. the San Diego rock and roll. That was our, we thought, Oh, we'll just do one marathon and we'll go out, you know, to somewhere really beautiful. And, um, long story short, I qualified for Boston, like with my Timex watch, 
I thought may maybe oh, I could. My, Abby, it's my dog. <laughs> totally get it. The cleaners are at our house, and so yeah. we're over at the office. Totally Come get here, it. Come here, baby girl. Come here. Come here. Now Abby gets to be on the show. Hey, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> so you you qualified for Boston your first marathon? Yeah. Get yeah. Out. Well, we. It's so funny because we just. Shh, shh, shh. I always laugh about the way that we trained, like, you know, like it was the days of the daily mile and like we had Timex, nobody, we didn't have GPS. And so we would just be like, well, I think if we run three, three hours, that'll be about 20 miles. And, um, sometimes we would map my run. Sometimes we wouldn't. So I think like, I probably trained a lot harder than I realized. Yes. Um, yeah. Like our 10 mile Wednesday runs were probably like 12 miles sometimes. Well, um, you had the Ironman triathlon watch. Did you not? Um, that's I, what we all had. <laughs> I, know, I don't even know what I had. I I don't even know. It was just like a, a stop and go. I don't even know what it was. It was so simple back then, right? Maybe so you do countdown repeat or something like that, right? <laughs> and, and like an iPod with like the Foo Fighters yes. as my playlist, yes. you know, like didn't even have a smartphone yet. Yep. Um, but anyway, so I was like, well, I guess I have to run Boston because like I knew, I knew a little bit about running, not a ton as far as that culture, but right. I did know that people tried really hard to qualify for the Boston marathon. So I was like, I, I feel like I, you it would be go. disrespectful if I don't go. Should go. <laughs> so I did that. And then it just kind of all like trickled out. Like my husband was like, well, if you're doing a second one, I can't not oh do a second gosh. one. And then we, we both just kept getting a little bit faster and um, yeah, I'm still running. Like I ran my last marathon last fall. Um, what number running. was that for you? I think it was 17. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. I think, um, right now though, like I'm running like three, four days a week. I do a Pilates class, a spin class. I'm very much enjoying moving my body and exercising yep. and being active, taking one rest day a week, but on the other days doing some form of exercise, but not obsessively running. Exactly. No, I, I, I feel you. Like I, my marathon experience was a little bit different. I did my first, I joke it was my second because it was my first and my last. Um, <laughs> I did Marine, Marine Corps in 2004 and then a year and a half later had hip surgery. Mm. So that kind of slowed some things down. No BQ that time. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I so heard for, that's an incredible race though. I, that's oh one that I need to do. You do. You do. It's one of those, I mean, I'm fortunate enough to, to, we we've lived here for 20 years and I used to live walking distance from the start. And it's just oh, wow. one of those that like, even if you're not a runner, it's just this hugely emotional, mm -hmm. just incredible experience. And um, there's so many people and the Marines do such an amazing job putting the race on and just like, it's all the feels it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's good stuff. So yeah. you And when you come, you'll have to come say hi. <laughs> yes, I will for sure. Yeah. My sister lived in the DC area for years and my mom's run that marathon. And so I'm, She's always like, that's the one you got to do. Definitely. Definitely. So for you, like thinking back on, you know, you're, you're running before you had the boys, um, you know, the, for you, did you kind of look ahead and be like, oh, it's always going to be like this? Or did you have a feeling that, you know, after kids, it might be a little bit different? Gosh, it's changed so much over the years with my oldest being 10. I... I think after my first baby, I was probably pretty reckless with my running. Mm -hmm. Like I went back to it full force right away. I mean, I, I was doing things that I would never tell anybody else to do, or if they were, I would be alarmed. I would be like, what are you doing? Are you trying to get injured? Is this like some, like, like, are you running away from something? Cause I, I mean, what were I you ran, doing? well, I ran a marathon four months postpartum. Dang fast too, like three, three thirty something like wow. low. How did it feel? Terrible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Um, and I, I think I was just like, you know, I knew that postpartum anxiety would probably be something I would struggle with. And I did. Um, yeah. but I, I felt like I needed my running to feel normal. Yep. And so I was like, I'm doing the monumental marathon. So I had my son June 26th and ran that marathon like November 4th or whatever that first wow. weekend in November was. Um, I did a 20 mile training run, pushing a stroller with like 
a 12 week old, 10 week old, like he was so little. Um, and so I look back now at those things I was doing and I, I didn't realize how aggressive I was being. And I was younger, yeah. you know, I was, I was 29. Yeah. And so I think my body was more, a lot more durable than it is now, as far as like injuries and stuff. I don't know how I didn't get injured that year. Yeah. Um, but then, so after every baby, yeah. I chilled out a little bit more. <laughs> it's funny that first one you, I, I see this so much is I feel like we all feel like we have something to prove. Yeah. And I, I don't know where that comes from, even if like logically you get it and understand it, like you still, but like, I mean, I, I quit it too, but like, even, I was so much more chill after mm -hmm. my second, I was like, I'll get to it when I get to it. There's, there's, there's nothing to prove, but I definitely see, did you run a lot in your first pregnancy? Yes. Okay. A ton. And it felt, and it felt good. I don't even remember. I mean, I think it felt okay. Yeah. I ran the day before I gave birth. I That's mean, amazing. I was just like, and I, and I ran through all my pregnancies. My last baby, I was, I was almost 35 and I, about 30 weeks pregnant. I was like, this sucks. Like I do not want to run anymore. Like I doesn't feel yeah. good. I'm just doing it. I, you know, I was doing it because I knew the exercise made me feel better. Right. Um, I love to run and I walking, I don't get that same like satisfaction. No, it's not the same. Mm -mm. any form of exercise really. Um, but I was just so uncomfortable and I was just like, you don't have to do this anymore. So I just started walking every day instead. And, um, that's the longest I'd ever really gone without running. Mm. Um, and then I was a week late with him. So I was like 41 weeks pregnant. They induced me and I still was a, still took him like with your 12. fourth, you yes. were late a week. And then they induced me and it still took like 12, 13 That's hours. Just wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't, he wasn't going to come either. Like he would have been in there another week, but, um, so I, my, I don't know if you know this part of my story, but my, I had a C-section for my first baby mm -hmm. and then I V back to my last three. Mm -hmm. So they're always like pretty conservative with the Pitocin and whatnot because yeah. I'm V backing. Um, so that's probably part of the reason it took a while. They probably would have cranked it up a little bit more had, had he yeah, I'm I'm amazed baby. you got three V backs. That's yeah. You don't hear that very often. You, you did you have the same um, OB for everyone? I well, so I had the same OB, um, but I had like different doctors deliver. But like I, okay. my regular, you know, it's one of those practices where there's like twelve doctors in the practice. Yep. Um, and she did my C-section, which was okay. amazing. And then my other babies just fell on days that she didn't wasn't you know the doctor on call. Right. Um, but actually that's, she's incredible woman. And, um, she was my doctor for 12 years. So we, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. We recently moved. And honestly, like it's been one of the hardest <laughs> things about moving. Cause I just felt like, I know she has a gazillion clients and, and people that patients that she works with, but yeah. I'd been with her for so long and through so much together that it's been, it's been really emotional for me to leave her. Oh, I can honestly. imagine. Yeah. Did, did you feel like even from the beginning, she got you as far as your activity was concerned? Like, because I, I know I have a lot of patients that either they, their OBs don't understand um, the intensity that they need um, for their running mm -hmm. or their workouts or things like that. Do you feel like she got you or did you feel like you had to kind of explain it the first round and by the fourth kid, she got it? I think she was like always kind of in awe that like I ran so much. Um, like she was just like, Oh my gosh, you're crazy. But like in a funny, like joking way. And she was always super supportive of, yeah. of my active lifestyle. And I think like always appreciated it that I care to take care of my body in that way. Yeah. Um, I connected with her mostly on a very emotional level. Cause the first time I went in to see her, it was, she was a random doctor to me and I was having a miscarriage and I just like, <sighs> she was the doctor that was yep. available and she, walked in after they read the ultrasound, obviously that, you know, I was miscarrying and, um, she just like crouched down and looked at me in the eye and gave me a hug and was like, so, so good. And I think, you know, I have a lot of health related anxieties and she's just yeah. known how to handle them with a lot of care over the years and yeah. to be serious when she needs to be serious and yep. to like, let it roll off and, and to kind of like, calm me down. And so 
yeah, it's been really hard leaving her. I actually like, I want her phone number so I can, you know what I mean? So I can just text her because you're just going to go back just for your, your GYN appointments. <laughs> oh, you, I did. I did for a year and a half. And I, awesome. I, I finally had to stop. I was like, um, cause we would visit home in the summers and at Christmas and I yeah. had six months checkups for some stuff. And I scheduled my appointments when I would go home because I was like, I'm not yeah. ready to leave her. And it you got to be too stressful though. It's like, I yeah. this can't be like part of our trip every time we go home. Yeah. No, that gets to be a little bit much, especially with the, the four kids. But I mean, I think you bring up a good point though, that to find somebody that you trust, um, especially in a time of vulnerability. Um, I, we, we had a miscarriage in between our kids and I think we caught it maybe 14 weeks. So it, it was oh, later that's late. on. It yeah. is. And DNC, everything was fine. I went back, I think, for my two-week checkup after the DNC. And my son was with me. And he was like, I don't know, a year at that point. And they were switching from paper to electronic medical records. And the guy comes in and he, he's like, oh, f 15 weeks. Have you felt the baby kick yet? And I was mm -hmm. like, and I'm trying to keep my shit together because yeah. my kid's there. And I'm like, you did a DNC two weeks ago. And I went home. My husband's like, you can't go back there. Was it the same person that did the DNC? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yes. And I wanted to go to him because he was, I had a C with my first as well. And he was supposedly the VBAC guy. And here I had done this so carefully. And like, you can't go back to somebody like that. You just, you can't. Oh my you know? gosh. What did um, he say when you said that? He just looked at me. He's like, I'm so sorry. And then he walked out of the room and like, I'm pretty sure some nurse got her ass handed to her, but like. Right. Cause she should like, have prepped him. For well, yes, exactly. Like, or she handed him the wrong chart or a blank chart or something like that. I'm like, I, I get that mistakes happen. That cannot happen. <laughs> like, well, just, and, yeah. and if it did happen, I need like some real serious, like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Cause yeah. you know, people well, are people. People oh, make I, mistakes, but like, I need some sort of like something. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. Like give yeah. you a big hug. I don't know, man. That's it, devastating. Well, in, in one of those, like back to the trust thing, like I, I had a, um, a friend of ours, our, our boys are, are really good friends and about the same age. And she gave me the name of her midwife. And I was like, before I agree to do care, I'm going to sit down with you and tell you this because I'm freaked out. Like, mm -hmm. like, I don't know who to trust anymore. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm so glad that you found somebody that you trust. But the, the other part I was thinking about too, when you were talking is um, to have a provider, I don't know, look at what your activity is and know how important it is for your mental mm -hmm. well-being. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the things, DC area, we've, we have a lot of very focus people to put it nicely like everybody's very high achieving mm -hmm. and so on mm -hmm. and running and people have high activity levels to manage a lot of stress and if you tell them no you shouldn't be running or you shouldn't be doing this or whatever like they're gonna stop listening yeah and i i feel so bad for moms that you know somebody tells them no without understanding how important that is for them instead of saying okay i get what role this plays in your life let's figure out how we can do this safely and to to make sure you're you're supported and all that good stuff um because i know there's people out there with listening that would be listening to this and being like oh she did this she went too fast like no <laughs> i mean yeah i mean i would i would though those first that first pregnancy and and even the second like yeah i i think i was reckless with my body i really do and you know what, though, because your oldest is 10. And this is why I say this. So my my oldest is 12. Um, we did not know then what we know now. It's and so it's true. not fair to go back and be like, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Because like, we literally were like, don't do anything. And that's not a good option either. Like mm -hmm. we had no guidelines for running in pregnancy. We barely have them now. We had no guidance for be like just a bunch of mat Pilates exercises and then go run and see how it goes when you get the magical magical six-week clearance like yep I mean that not, day I was out for a run three miles yeah second and it's, I was clear. it's not fair to go back and and say oh well I should have done this well maybe with your what you know now after four kids but yeah I mean 
I think you're totally right. It was a totally different world there. Not yeah. to mention the online space was totally different then. You know, there was nothing. I mean, yeah. what, was there Twitter? <laughs> I think, I think I, this is funny. I, Wait, actually, I think you joined in 2010. I think I saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. And I had my first baby 2012. But um, I specifically yep. remember being at this, like, my favorite bagel shop that I would go to throughout my pregnancy. I'd go and get this awesome bagel sandwich called the Deer Creek and a, a Dr. Pepper. Because okay. during my first pregnancy, I stopped drinking coffee because I was like, worried that the caffeine would hurt the baby. And now I know that like I was being really overly cautious. And so I was like, well, one, one Dr. Pepper won't hurt the baby. Right. <laughs> so I, I, that was like my go-to thing. And anyway, this um, young guy, I don't know why I was talking to him and he was like, you're not on Instagram. You're about to have a baby. You got to get on Instagram. And I like literally sat at that bagel shop and signed up for an Instagram account like that day. <laughs> that's amazing oh my and then what did you post like I think that my first picture was of my son and oh, like his a little he, he had a like a little hip dysplasia and yeah. so he had this like brace that he had to wear for six oh, months six weeks I know they're so sad when they have to I wear know. those little things right <laughs> well I remember being sad but also being so grateful like okay oh this my is, gosh yes like the, I knew I was like very um very much like oh my gosh if this is all I have to wear you know but right. I was it, also like as a first time mom, it felt very heartbreaking to see that little brace go on his little body. Right. Um, but I think the first picture is a black and white picture of him in his little brace, like Aww. looking up, like looking like a little birdie, like a little, you know, he was tiny. He was yeah. like six, four, um, which yeah, is it's... tiny for me. You know, all my other babies were consecutively larger, but oh my um, goodness. yeah, that... I think that's when I first got it. And it was totally you know, not what it is today. No, no. And that's the thing. I, I, again, my son was 2011. So you were just kind of during doing Facebook, but it's so weird. Like we wouldn't, we wouldn't take pictures mm -hmm. with our phones. You would take them with your camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of his stuff we have on like a video camera mm -hmm. and it's, it's so funny. Um, but you would share maybe some pictures with, you know, some friends that came over to, to meet him or things like that. And then even with my daughter, I don't even think we had switched over yet. But now, oh my gosh, like just even like 2 a.m. options you have for reading about lactation or, yeah. you know, tongue tie or your pubic bone pain or things like that. We just like you had Google and that was kind of it. And even then, like the stuff that was out there wasn't that great. So, I mean, it, the, the good news, bad news about social media is, is I think there's a lot more information out there. I think the hard part is, and that's where I spend like half my day, is you figure out kind of how to vet stuff for people and how to, you know, it's, it's hard because people will read things like do this or don't do that. Like you, the coffee thing, right? Like mm -hmm. that's right up there with, I have a, a good friend who's Greek and she's like, you can't tell a Greek woman, woman not to eat feta while she's mm. pregnant. <laughs> Mm -mm. I was like, I get you. I get you. I mean, I remember being at a pizza place and being like, is this pasteurized? And it's like, right. of course it's pasteurized. You're at like a regular like pizza place. Like they're not giving you unpasteurized cheese. The unpasteurized thing. I mean, we were in Costa Rica when I was nine weeks pregnant with him. And I think we did like some waterfall repelling. But we went to a, a farm and they wanted to give us unpasteurized cheese. And the, and the guide was like, wait, you can go down the waterfall, but not eat the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it good. Living on the edge. I don't know. It happens. A GI so, struggle is uh, no fun at all. No, no, definitely not interested <laughs> in that. So for you as, you, as you had more kids, like, did you find it easier to get back each time? Or was it harder because you had more, you know, responsibilities and things to navigate? Like, how did you figure out your training? Yeah, I think it was harder every time. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even think I realized how simple it actually was when I had one, one, which <laughs> that sounds really like mean to someone who has their first baby, because it is yeah. really hard when it's your first baby. You just realize once you have more that like, Oh, like right now I'm loading like three kids into this car. And right. like, I, I think back to when my kids were all really little. And I was like, um, I took all of them to the, I would take, load them all up, get them all into the German fested YMCA childcare. I had two hour allotted time, work out for an hour, take yeah. a quick shower. 
and then do an interview from the YMCA, like a oh podcast God. interview, because I was like, this is my childcare for the day. Right. And I wasn't really making any money on my podcast yet. And so I was just like, I got to do what I can. And then I'd buy the extra hour of childcare because at the Y yeah. you can pay for an extra hour um, to like run errands or whatever. So I, oh I, God. There is nobody on this planet that utilized the Y child care more than Lindsay Hine. <laughs> like, I was going to say, I wish I'd known about that. <laughs> oh, you could actually get up to four hours. Seriously? Because you could work out for two and then oh do the God. babysitting for two. So, I mean, I had every every system figured out. Um, but yeah, I think back to those days and just like the struggle it was to even just get them all loaded up and, you know, yeah. then, then I'm done and I'm going to get home and do the naps and all the stuff and you know, now my youngest is in preschool and he, um, he gets home at, he comes home at one, but he, okay. you know, and it's just the one that's home at one. The other kids come home at three forty-five, and they all can make themselves a peanut butter sandwich. And Isn't that he, nice? Yeah. It's like, I don't think you realize how hard you were actually working and how good you were actually doing until you're past it. And you're like, wow, I would agree. I did all that. I would agree on, on not much sleep. <laughs> tired overwhelmed did your boys sleep through the night or I don't even remember it's so funny like people you know what I mean like I do I do yes and no <laughs> like I mean everybody they all yeah. had their own thing and I think um about seven months was around the time that my first two started sleeping through the night and then about a year was my second two yeah and um I mean, we did the cry it out, which I get judged for. I, you know, people got opinions about everything, but that's the only thing that worked for us. My oldest was five. Oh, he was you, five. Because you were not evil like me and didn't do cry it out. <laughs> no, trust me. I think I tried. He, he's like, <laughs> no, both my kids, like this one had to be like, both my kids were 41 and a half weeks. And the first one, literally three day induction had to be pried out of my body. He's very <laughs> much my home body as a 12 year old, like. We joke that he's going to live in the basement someday. I love you, honey. <laughs> um, no, he very much is that. Like, he knows he needs to know where his people are. And so for yeah. him, he, when it was fine, was his sister when she was three. She went straight from the crib to the bottom bunk. And they lived happily ever after there up until this last summer. Um, and she could have gone sooner. Um, but she was doing swim at a different time. And then middle school, he starts earlier now and all that kind of stuff. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's even now it's, it's hard because I want to get out and get my workouts in before they wake up because they're up earlier now. And then have you started into the craziness of the after school activities and. Yeah, we stuff? have, um, we've like intentionally made sure that we're not like over scheduling, um, but I think three days a week we have soccer. Yeah. Um, like my my second has soccer on Mondays. My oldest has it Tuesday, Wednesday. And then Thursdays and Fridays are totally free. Um, my little has nice. soccer on Saturday morning. So we've been like pretty intentional about not overloading it. Yep. Um, and they walk to school and walk nice. home. It's really, really nice. It's a half a mile from our house. So they walk or ride their bikes. And so they get home about four and um, – it's usually pretty chill. I mean, I think That's when my good. little two are in sports more, which is yep. start happening more in a couple of years. Um, but right now it's like all the neighborhood kids pile in our backyard and that makes a difference. That makes oh. it what are you doing here? Come here. Come here. She's such it a it makes little. it so much easier because they they self-entertain. Yeah. And well, and honestly, I think that's probably the benefit with four is like they're in a pack mm -hmm. wherever they go. So you don't have to worry about that quite so much. It's so, so true. And you attract a lot of the neighbors because you have all the age ranges. Right. You're like, I, I've got one for somebody, right? Yes. <laughs> and then everybody just lands here because it's like, all they're all here. There's so many of them. That's nice. So so when do you get your work in, workouts? And is that basically after they go off for the day then or? A lot right now, a lot of times, exactly yeah. that. It's um like before this call, I, I got them all to school and they go to school late. Like they don't go till nine. My elementary school, yeah, I, we drop her off a little bit early. We can walk as well, thank goodness. And so we usually leave about eight thirty. So I'm back home about eight forty, which is yeah. nice. And she just plays on the playground before then. Yeah, which is so. great. Yeah, we yep. could we could get them as early as eight forty five, but we we just never have our together. <laughs> um, but my youngest can't get dropped off till nine ten. Oh, 
So <laughs> it's like, that 10 minutes makes a big difference though. <laughs> I know. Like, so like today my oldest two walked to school by themselves and then my kindergartner had like slept in a little bit. So I was like, I'm driving you today. Yep. So I just left, I drove him and the preschooler and I've been actually walking with my preschooler too, which he, nice. he'll walk like a mile before school. Cause his school's a little bit further. Okay. Um, so yeah, a lot of times I'll work out from like nine 30 to 10 30, take a quick shower, do calls from 11 to one, um, two days a week. I have a couple more hours to work. And then, mm -hmm. um, other days I go pick up my son and my husband and I kind of like tag team yeah. with him. Like I, I can take the majority of it, but yep. if I have an interview scheduled at like 2 PM, I'll just be like, Hey, are you free today? So we kind of just work together. That's nice to do that. Yeah. So it sounds like you, you kind of have, have built this well-oiled machine, that yeah it's like kind of fit the stuff in wherever yeah i have yeah. yeah i have a pretty good system my husband always tells me though he's like if you really want to be efficient with your time when um sandy that's our youngest is at school until one like you got to stop working out for that hour right then and i'm like yeah but i don't want to get up really early and work out i want to read and i work a little bit in the mornings before they uh... get up i do that instead of working out I used to do that in the, in the before times before the pandemic, my gym uh -huh. used to be walking distance from our house. So I Ooh, would, that's nice. I would work in the morning, take the kids to school. And then we had a mom group, basically parents that we'd meet at nine 30 at the gym and get a workout in. And so there was like a weird, like half hour between drop off and then, but mm -hmm. it was great. And then I ended up switching gyms, you know, things owner shifted, that kind of stuff. Um, so my gym now I, I drive to, but I can go at 530, which means I'm back home by 630, can get my son up at 645. And it, I mean, it's, it's, Do you have to it's wake not him up? perfect. Eh, yeah. Like You're he's that age. Yes. But I mean, the time change didn't help. Mm -hmm. the, the time change didn't help. So he's pretty good. Like he, he's usually, I'll, I'll say, Hey, can I go take a shower? And he'll give me a very sad and pathetic nod. <laughs> And then usually by the time I'm out of the shower and I'll meet him downstairs and um, he'll get his, it's so nice when they can make their own food, but I'll put his, I'll put his clothes in the the, the dryer and warm them up a little bit. Oh, <laughs> that's, so, that's so cozy and nice. I want someone to do that for me. I told you he's my homebody. Yeah, so, that's so like, sweet. Everything happy, cozy, and he's a happy kid going off oh, to school. So. You'll, you'll like, he'll always remember that mom warmed up my clothes in the dryer. I, I hope so. I hope he will. So. But, but we also, we, you've got to drive to the middle school now. So that's the big difference this year is yeah we do carpool um yeah. so again like I mean I feel like I mean you've probably learned this with with four kids is like you figure something out and then something changes and then you figure it out again and then it changes and you're pro that's probably like your second language right now is like all right re <laughs> redo reorganize keep going <laughs> I mean I think one of the biggest things that um when you have a lot of kids I think one of the biggest things you have to learn to do is to receive help. And yeah, I don't mean that in a way that like, I want to constantly be relying on my neighbors to do this for us and be that family that's super needy. But like, right. if you are somebody's neighbor and your kid's going somewhere anyway, and you have to drive there anyway, and you know, your neighbor has four kids and they've got three other places to be, you would, you don't care to take one of their kids with you. You want to, you want to right. help them. And so, yep. um, I think that I've had to like, just give up caring. Like, oh, I feel like we're this burden on them because they're driving Lewis to, you yeah. know, this place once a week. And it's like, they don't care. And if I can return no. the favor, I 100% will. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about that when our younger two really truly are in, in sports, like our big kids, usually yep. we let them do one to two at a time, two max at a, you know, per season. Yep. Like there's just, there's just no way we're not going to need to be in four different places sometimes. No, not at all. I mean, even, even with two kids, like tonight, um, my oldest, he can get home on his own. I pick up my daughter, he's got OT. And then as soon as I bring him back, I've got to take her and drive her to softball. And like, it's just, it, it's, it's like you switch hats and then you go. And sometimes if it's at the same time, you have to, there's just, there's no way around it. Did it take you, like how many kids did it take you to figure that out? <laughs> I mean, I think it got to the point where when my youngest, my oldest was in kindergarten and he, his school was across the street and I would have yep. like ki kids napping and all yeah. this. And I would just have to ask certain parents. I'm like, Hey, can you get Marshall across the street at the end of the day? Yeah. 
Like, why would I ever think a parent would care to be like, sure, I am going right. to be there anyway. And I know you have like a yeah. newborn baby. Like, why wouldn't I get Marshall across the street for you? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And, and it's the kind of thing too, where, you know, so an example is I'm coaching my younger two soccer on Saturday oh. mornings now. And one of our friends down the street, her son's on the team. And I'm like, listen, I'm coaching anyway. Like, why yeah. would, why would you ever drive him? Like, why would you ever, why would he ever not go with us? You know? Yep. And so I think it's just being able to do that. I actually remember when my youngest, my oldest, I only had two at the time were like one and three. And, um, I had a friend that was, she's like 10 years older than me. And her youngest was probably like eight at the time. And she had three kids and she was like, let me um, take your kids to spend the night one night. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, let, let me just like offer Let me just have them spend the night and you can go out to dinner and like, and she did. She had both. Of, and, and Lewis, That's my awesome. youngest, he, he was like sporadically getting up in the middle of the night. You never knew what, what you're going to get. And I always yeah. thought like when my kids get a little bit bigger, I have to pay this forward and do this for someone. Yeah. So um, it, it's not anything you can force, but I'm like, I can't wait to like be friends with someone with younger yeah. baby and, you know, to maybe be able to do that for them. Did you have that experience growing up or no? Um, which experience? Like, like having that community that you could just kind of, you know, um, share the work with. No, I don't think that our family was like that so much. We like lived out in the country and same here. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, my mom did everything. I mean, my, yep. my, my dad financially <laughs> supported our family, but like my mom did everything. Yeah. I, I can't even believe all that my mom did. I, I think about my marriage now and, and the way we divide things up and I'm like, can't, I don't yeah. even, you know, so, um, yeah, I feel super grateful, but also I'm super glad that like in 2023, that's just should, that's like turning into the expectation. Yeah, very much. My, we, we lived in the boonies and I think my mom started working again after my, I have a brother who's six years younger after he was kind of old enough. And it wasn't, I think until I was doing running, actually, I think it was like cross country running and things like that, that because they would come to all my meets and everything. Um, but somebody was always there. Mm -hmm. and, and most of the time it was both of them. I'm like, how did you guys do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, like it, it was it, for a very long time, it was just my dad working. Um, but what was really cool was later on, especially with cross country skiing and cross country running is um, they started doing both those sports so they could find me out on the course. Hmm. And so that was the beginning of them actually being active. So I, you know, I, I, I will be forever thankful for, you know, the support that they had. I don't think we could swing it now, but that for them was what brought them into activity, which I think is just kind of a really cool thing. So, you know, that is really cool. My mom actually started running when I started running cross country. My That's like, awesome. yeah, my childhood, I always remember my mom being active. She would go to exercise Inc. I, I have memories of her like, walking around the driveway with the bar on her shoulders like she always ah, that's awesome yeah but uh she started running when I joined the cross country team so cool and she was young my parents had a super young so okay. I'm like it's funny because I look back and I'm like she didn't start running until she was older she was like 35 you know oh she was like gosh. really young so How old's your mom now 61. Oh, she's a baby. My goodness. I know. I know. She, <laughs> she was like 20. She was 21 when she had me, but she was 19 when she had my sister. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They're very, they're very, my parents had us very, very young. So that she always laughs at, at like all my parenting stuff I do now, because she's like, we just like figured it out. Right. She's like, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have time to read those books. I didn't have time. I just like, I was like 20 and I had to go work at Pizza Hut part time. And I just, you know what I mean? I kept you guys alive. I right? loved you. I cared about you. But, and she, she'll say, funny? like, I did a lot wrong. But guess what? We all do a lot wrong, even when we do read all the books. <laughs> right. Yeah. My kids never read the books, by the way. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I've got a couple of questions that I yeah. ask everybody. First Sorry. One, I know this is longer than you're used to. No, I, you're I totally, can really you're totally keep good. going. <laughs> Hey, it's all good. Um, favorite activity since becoming a mom? Um, definitely going to my son's soccer games. Oh, I love. Just, now, did you did you play soccer as a kid? Or? I did a little bit. Yeah, okay. I did a little bit. Um, but and I'm not the little kid games. Like 
the big kid games once they start knowing how to play. Like, they actually look is... like soccer and it's not yeah. like ants on sugar. Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. I love, I love, there's nothing I love more than seeing my kid work hard at something and enjoy doing it. That's awesome. It is, it is fun when they, when they start to do that. My kids have yet to do a sport that I did. Mm. They're, they're all, it's all ball sports right now. And I never did any of those. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to them getting a little bit older. My son just joined track. Mm, I know. Fingers crossed. He we'll see how it, it goes. <laughs> I think he would be a great shot putter, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Next one. One piece of advice for new moms. Um, one piece. This is a great question. What did I need to know? Um, One piece of advice to new moms. You can pick more than one if you want. Okay. (laughs) It's okay if you're tired. Yes. I I was so obsessed with trying to get sleep that I was never going to get and worried about being tired all the time. And being tired sucks, but it's okay. You are not going to be tired forever. And yeah, I know we still get woken up in the middle of the night. Things happen, but you're, you will get better sleep. You will. And maybe that's going to change again when my kids become teenagers and they're out driving and I don't fall asleep until they get home at night. But like for right now, I mean, and yeah. listen, I have a kid in my bed almost every night, but like one, one of them ends up, in, but it's fine. I sleep. Right. So it all just, works. it's okay. If you're tired, you, you will, you will be okay. I'm, I'm at the age now where um, I just finished my first half marathon. And um, so I was trying to like get sleep. Right. And so I was going to bed before the kids and they're so happy with it. They're so used to it. They tuck me in. The only problem is now oh, it's like so cute. my nine year old is going into that stage. If you remember as a young girl where you just, you're worried about everything and oh. she'll have like a crisis of conscience at like 11, 15 mm. PM. And so I've been sleeping for like 90 minutes and she'll come in and tell me some obscure thought. And I'm like, can you save that till tomorrow? We can go in depth. <laughs> we can get into it. But right now, right now. Yeah, not right now, not right now. All right. This is, this is a new one I'm asking people. It's like, who is somebody? And for you, it could be, you know, in the parenting space, it could be in the running space. Like, who should we be, who, who should we know about in this space right now? Who's a voice that's, you know, you're really resonating with or somebody where you're like, ah. I know someone that a lot of people, and you might know Celeste Good- Goodson. <gasps> I love, she's been on the podcast twice. I would assume. <laughs> I love yeah. her, yeah. Yeah, I would say she's a really good one because, yeah. and I, I actually had her on my podcast for parents a while back. And, you know, so something I think about a lot, like, I had mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, I was super reckless after my first baby. And yeah. I don't know how I didn't really do damage. Like I, I haven't had the pelvic floor issues that a lot of people have. Um, but I think that being able to be referred to someone like Celeste to yeah. walk you through all that, yep. like we just leave clueless. The OB doesn't give you any kind of information. They're just like, I wait, know. six weeks. So I would say if you're, if you're really interested in, um, and making sure you do things the right way. The other person, she's good friends with Steph Bruce. Sarah's lovely. Sarah she's, Tanza, yes. yes. She's amazing. Um, she was on last year. She's like my spirit animal. Like we could have been on, um, we could have chatted for like hours. Pelvic she's potential. With, yes. Yeah, no, she's amazing. Um, no, that, that's the other thing with like social media that I think it's really opened up who we can, you know, refer to in this space and who, you know, who we're learning from and you think you're off on your own and you're like, no, this person's doing this too. Like it's, it's really kind of opened up that community, at least from a professional side of things. So um, no, we've never met in person, but we, we keep saying we, we need to do this because she's just a lovely human she and is. just a smart, smart person. So Energetic. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Yes. No, she's lovely. Awesome. Well, I'm glad we're on the same wavelength there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then last one, this one isn't so hard. I promise. Um, what does it mean to you to be an active mom in postpartum? Well, I just really want be like being active is a way of life for me. Yeah. It, it is just the way I think we were created to be. We were created to be active individuals and creatures and, I want my kids to see that. Yeah. And it, yes, I, I guess you could say it's partly for them, um, but it, it's who I want to be. I want to be active and I want my kids to know and see that um, having an active lifestyle yeah. 
is the healthiest way you can live for your mind and your body. And, you know, if you are someone who moves your body every day, you know, you know that that's, we need that. We were created for that. And so, um, and I want my kids to view activity as play and fun right now. And when they're adults, like I want it to be something that they look forward to and enjoy. So it's just like not an option to not be active. And I don't mean every day, like I pretty much don't work out on Sundays, you know, like there are days that are just like, it's not today or I'm too busy. But for me, it's just the way we choose to live. It's just who you guys are. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Well, we will drop the mic there. Lindsay Hine, 626 on Instagram. <laughs> I love that your, your graphics there. That's like, that's why I love the platform. You Stream can copy some things up. I've yeah. never used StreamYard. No, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. Um, again, if you want to find out more about Lindsay, you also do coaching um, for running mm-hmm. a little bit. So you can hop on there and um, she's all her infos in her link in bio. Um, and you can check her out there. So thanks, Lindsay, so much for all you do in your podcast. We enjoy them. <laughs> and uh, mm. thanks for being on. Thank you.